Hey, how you doing, people? It's your boy Dre Day every day with my co host, Bonbon623. <laughs> and today we have another episode of Black Nerd Talk. And today we're going to talk about the very popular franchise, Five Nights at Freddy's. Yes. And now, me personally, Bonbon's going to be the guru here. Because I follow it, but I haven't followed it. Like, what are they on? Five, six, as far as the games? Five, six, seven, eight? Well, it, like, branched off at some point and just kind of started to... Basically, we're going to talk about how Five Nights began to lose the plot, I think. Right. Yeah, because Five Nights at Freddy's, from my understanding, has always been about showbiz pizza. No, well, that... Freddy Fazbear Pizzeria. Yeah. Well, but for, I mean, I, want, I do want to put out there before for the younger audience, Showbiz Pizza was what Chuck E. Cheese was before Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Chuck E. Cheese is a character from Showbiz. Uh -huh. they, had a, they had a different main, they had a different guy who was the guy different animatronic that they marketed for showbiz, but I guess Chuck E. Cheese was the one they picked to move forward. Oh, see, I didn't know that. I mean, okay, you just learned something today. Mm -hmm. But yes, yeah, so look, the thing is if you Google showbiz pizza and you just look at those like, like those designs in the 80s are, are completely horrifying. <laughs> like just, just them sitting still like they have the picture of one or the the deal is just looking off to the side and kids are supposed to take pictures with that. Mm -hmm. So someone took that and just decided to turn it into, hey, what if you had to just observe this place overnight? And it went from there to the stars. Mm -hmm. So do you know like the... Um... Okay, let's go all the way back to the first one. The, the character that's the security guard, is that a consistent character or is it just, or did they start adding narrative later? Um, so it started off as two people. So the first guy, gosh, I'm lying if I say I remember what the security guard's name was. I thought one of them was like Michael Schmidt or something, but there was a guy before that. And purple guy is the one that calls you on the phone and he's like, hello, hello. This is such and such, and I'm teaching right. the security guy. Um, so he was a recurring character in the original first three games. And then after that, they kind of started to branch out. And it, I'm not entirely too sure who the security guard character is after that, because that's when the story gets real kingdom heartsy where it's just like you don't know what's going on anymore right. who are these people what's right. going on did they say if something happened to their first security guard like if he quit or did he get consumed by something or did they just kind of write him out the story and nobody knows you know i'm really not sure because he was there in the first three games i think and then i think it's either the third or the fourth game where it takes place in a house and you're a child. And so you're not that security guard anymore. So I don't quite remember oh. what happens to that security guard. Okay. Yeah, he might have quit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if he didn't quit after the first game, he's a dedicated worker. man. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure he had to quit because then the pizzeria burnt down and then he like called it a day. Um, so and I think after that, when it went into like the nightmare mode, you were a kid and you were in your house, and then the animatronics were there. You see, okay, yes, I didn't know the pizzeria uh, burned down, so they're not. So does that mean the animatronics are out, or is it not even about animatronics anymore? I mean, <laughs> yes, and no. I mean, so it's there's this thing called remnant, which is okay. basically a soul in these right souls. yeah like the left i know what a remnant yeah yeah it's kind of like a lingering <laughs> uh and so, so they the, oh. that they just kind of keep showing up in the other locations too and there is a book series that is canon and not canon at the same yeah. time i guess so, oh, so this is metal gear solid it's, it's <laughs> we've really gotten away from where we've started <laughs> but it's 
Get it. Uh, to the, so to the best of your knowledge, um, <laughs> what is the most up-to-date information? Like, is there a, is it about a kid now or is it about <sighs> a, is, oh, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me just back back. Is Five Nights at Freddy's about the remnants of the animatronics or is it about a person that's observing this? Like, what's the perspective it's kind of viewed from? I think it's a little bit of both, really, because okay. there's where it's at now, there's different security guards and stuff, okay. but it's the same guy i guess he he won't die he keeps kind of reincarnating he's like freddy or jason or chucky where you think you got rid of him but here he comes again and it's just different people happen to deal with his brand of stank but it's really i don't i don't know in the beginning it was about freeing the souls of the kids that were put in the suits and oh after that so, so, so that's what the 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 animatronics are kids souls yeah yeah he murdered like five kids and stuffed their bodies in the suits and so when people were like those stink those suits are kind of rank they stink and it's like yeah because there's a decomposing child in there and then um yeah yeah, yeah, yeah i didn't yeah i didn't know that <laughs> yeah so then their soul ended up getting attached to the suit so despite the fact that their body's not in there anymore the remnant is still in there possessing it so the suits are kind of like a conduit at this point right so they so in theory <laughs> the kids kind of want revenge for what happened to them is that kind of the angle they're working yeah and they got it and so then that was like games one through three or one through four or whatever and then it kept going because we can never just let a franchise lie still can we right. so when you're walking up target and walmart like hey five nights and freddy's has toys yeah so, yeah so now they have they had sister location and that's mm -hmm. where Baby and Bellora and some other people showed up. And that was supposed to be a continuation on from the guy that originally murdered those kids. I guess he had another branch where he was also doing a certain... Oh, they're going to take that down too. Yeah, dastardry. And then so that happened. And then now we're at another location called whatever the hell. And there's other animatronics there. And it's not clear if the kid that you were playing was actually a real boy or if he, too, was an animatronic and didn't know it. And I don't know his name. I can't remember. I think yeah. it ended up coming. I think his name is Gregory, actually, something. Okay. Anyway, you find out that he was an animatronic after all and that... Um, other other people started coming in and doing things. I'm I swear to God, I used to know what was going on with this series, but now it probably started going so many different directions. So many different yeah. directions. And Matt Pat, who is quite a YouTube. Yeah, that's so I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's tried to keep me abreast on everything, but I just mm -hmm. I kind of feel like it's all Greek now. It's almost like another right. You're right. It's <laughs> all okay. real. It's like who are these people? But um, so, the movie that came out more follows the beginning of the franchise. Which would make sense. Now, as far as like when you say the game, they had like spinoffs. Mm -hmm. They do um, like, okay, is it kind of like a one-off spinoff or did the spinoff have sequels? Yes. They had sequels. So Sister Location had like three games to itself, I think. And then whatever location we're at now, which I can't remember the name of it, that has like three or four games to it. Like it's it's a very continuous, like it's a very big franchise, right. which in, in its totality, there has to be like easily over 10 games in it. Right. Because I know one through five, I've seen the PlayStation 4 have, I think one through five, which is supposed to be mainline. And I, the way I've looked at it, I'm like, I don't, 
I don't know if it's something that I want to play or if I watch. Do you, do you play it yourself or do you watch it? I can't have things yelling and screaming and chasing. <laughs> no. I've seen that jump scare where it's like when they get when they get through to you, they jump in the screen and they're yeah. Okay, Is that still a thing? Is that still a thing? Like when you, I guess. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. Do you get caught now? Yeah. So now, I guess in the newest games, you're actually walking around the thing, and you're not just stuck yeah, in the security. Just stuck in one, looking at a camera. Okay. Yeah, if you're moving around, you have to interact with some of the animatronics, and sometimes mm -hmm. they get mad at you if you don't do what they want you to do, and <clears throat> you and stuff. And that's it's too much for my blood. So. <laughs> for your blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have any particular? If it's like a let's say favorite entry, would it if or story art? Do you do you like the main line or is that little mm -hmm. sister location is that better than this or is it kind of all even about even for you? I think it's definitely the beginning. The first the beginning is really good. It's something new because being that it was an indie game and it's just the one creator, we hadn't quite seen anything like that, and there was also. I was watching a video talking about how there's not a whole lot of like new monsters and horror lore coming out these days. Like we have all of the original stories. But this is kind of like Five Nights is the new entry. It's like the new boogeyman and stuff. And this might be like the new story that you tell your children. Like if you don't go to bed, then Freddy's going to come and get you. But right. fat bear and not Kruger. <laughs> right. um, so I think that's what made it so interesting because Typically, well, I was going to say, typically you wouldn't be scared of animatronics at a pizzeria, but they all, they are actually kind of scary if you think about it, because uh, Chuck E. Cheese and them. Well, I definitely, <laughs> definitely as we progressed with um, uh, technology and design, because mm -hmm. like I said, you go back to the old designs they had in the 80s, it's like, no, nah, I'm not, I'm not going there. Yeah. <laughs> But, but it wasn't like now, scary to people back then because that's just kind of what it was. But looking back on it now, it's like, dear God. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I think that it's a, it might have been a thing to where, because, you know, when you go to showbiz or Chuck E. Cheese, you're, the kids are running around playing mm -hmm. and they're probably not worried about the, but then when it's time to leave, it's like, hey, let's take this picture. And it's like, I got to stand next to that. So I think it may have been the kids were scared uh, and they just didn't have voices at the time. Yeah. And, and when we read up and when we actually look at the time period, the people who are making games now probably were those kids that was like, you know, I enjoyed this, but that was always creepy to me. Yeah, I just... It just was falling on deaf ears because it was blinded by the fun, I guess. Mm -hmm. So now I know you're a reader. Um, did that did it intrigue you, the books that they began to make? No. Did you read any? No, I'm not <laughs> I'm not jumping in to not jumping in. Any it's confusing. <laughs> is it that it's too confusing? Or I is think, it I think it's that on top of the fact that I'm pretty sure the books were written by him and he's not an author. So he put together what he could put together. But okay. considering he's not like an established writer or anything, it's kind of like you get what you get kind of thing. And I'm so that's, I would assume for like a reader, there's a certain presentation that you expect from when you pick up a book and it's like if it's not if it doesn't fit that structure it's going to kind of take you out of the reading experience yeah a little bit and then on top of the fact that i'm not looking to read any horror books that's not my genre <laughs> that, i keep yeah i keep forgetting that this is horror we're talking here so yeah you're not like hey Mm -hmm. I'm gonna sit down in my cozy time <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and read a little bit. On top of the fact that I heard that the people that did read it that it is a really frustrating read because he'll establish one thing in the book and stuff, and it wasn't like that in the game at all, or it'll contradict what the game has going on. And so now I'm using my brain way too much for this thing. <laughs> that's not fun. Yeah, I, someone told me that. Uh, 
Five Nights at Freddy's was on uh, in the realm of Metal Gear, in turn, not necessarily of the poignant art, but convoluted. Yeah. And this may go one way, but then we hit a hard left here, and it's like, wait a minute, that mm-hmm. kind of goes against these rules, and. And I think that's what's really frustrating me about this franchise because it started out so strong. And I get when you're on a high that you want to keep it going. But I think we've gotten to that part to where it's just starting to overstay its welcome. Much like the Fast franchise where it's like, all right, it started out one way. Now we are yeah. a different story. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's funny just talking about those things because it's like, okay, this is 2024. Do you know when the first entry was? Mm. It seemed like that was kind of like the first generation, if we would call it first generation of streamers, like 2012, 2013, 20, somewhere mm. in there. I think 2013-ish. So like, that would mean that people who are playing now is a new generation of um Five Nights at Freddy. So it's like, that's kind of like the, and I think that ends up being the push-pull where it's like, okay, this is our version of Five Nights at Freddy's and then here's a new generation. So it's like, they're looking at Five Nights at Freddy's a completely different way because they came in on the 10th game, mm-hmm. you know. And it's interesting because since I was there at the beginning and watching Markiplier play at the very top of it and seeing mm-hmm. where it started to where it's at now, it doesn't seem like the quality is quite yeah. there anymore. But I do think that they did good with the movie. While well, the movie does have its critiques, I still didn't really enjoy it. I know a lot of people didn't, but I thought it was a good time. I was immersed. Oh, you watched the movie, didn't you? Mm-hmm. Twice. So you, think the, the, you watched it twice? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So you think the movie did the... How can I say... Did it do the game justice or the the source like the source? It was more accurate to the source source material I of the first games. To a degree, or, they did change it enough to where if you never play the game, you're not familiar with the franchise and stuff, that you can still enjoy the movie and understand what's going on. But right. if you are familiar with the game, then you understood the little Easter eggs that they placed around and stuff. And you're like, oh, that's from such and such a thing. So to me, that was cool. It wasn't necessarily like a purist adaption by any means. And there were some choices that they made much in the game where it's like, who is this person? Why are they, why is this important? Why are we not this? (laughs) Right. So because of that, I think, that ended up taking some people out of it just because there was so much of like, now who is this? Why do we need to care about this person? You're staying on this particular point a little too long. Right. But the animatronics looked amazing. And it turns out that they were built by the Jen Henson's Muppet Company, which is why they looked amazing and looked incredibly real. And while watching the movie, I kept looking over at my staircase because I just knew that one of them was about to come down the stairs. <laughs> did they do the um the notorious jump scare like the deal in the screen? Did they include that in the movie? Not really, not so much. But they were walking around. Um, they right. did look horrible. They, I was scared. I right. was their eyes were glowing. Um, but there was some stuff that they did leave out, like Freddie's signature laugh. I was hoping that they would do that, but they did it in the credits, but it's kind of like it should have been in the movie, I think. But there's going to be multiple installations of this movie, of course, right. because we can never just let a thing be. Never just have one. It's like a um, it's like an oatmeal pie. Like that box of twelve, you can't just eat one. You know, like the other eleven aren't in there. Yeah. But the thing that I think was the most beautiful for the movie is they actually invited the gamers that have been playing the game for years to make little cameos. Um, The one person that wasn't in there was Markiplier, which I was devastated. And that was only because he was shooting his own film at the time. He's probably super busy with his own. Mm -hmm. He's like one of the biggest YouTubers, definitely one of the biggest YouTube streamers. Yeah, and he's the king of Five Nights at Freddy's. So it was was really, he was missed in it a lot. So 
So with that being said, of the streamers that you follow, is he did he is he playing them still to this day? When the new one comes out, he's oh okay. And then so because of that, I've really been trying to keep up and understanding like who people are and stuff. But I had yeah. been a journey; it's been a struggle, and now I'm just kind of watching out of support of my faves rather than support of the franchise. Right. And even going as far as to letting it play in the background while I'm doing other things. So I'll look up and I'm like, yep, still don't know what's going on. And then I'll yeah. go to whatever yeah. I'm doing. So with that being said, so Freddy's, is Freddy an animatronic or is Freddy mm -hmm. a separate character? Okay. Yeah, he's an animatronic. So what are the, do the others have now? Or how many of them is it? In the original. So we'll yeah, 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 definitely the original. So we have Foxy. And Foxy. he runs down the hallway at you and grabs you. I had okay. never seen anything like that before. So that really took me down. And okay. cemented a special place in my heart for that. And then there's Freddy Fazbear, who's the main bear. Oh, the, okay. I know the bear. Mm -hmm. okay. There's Chica, which is yeah. a chicken. She looks like a duck. I thought it was a duck, but it's a chicken. Okay. And then there's Bonnie, the Bonnie. bunny. And there's um balloon boy, and he's he's like a boy and he's carrying a balloon. And he goes, Hello. I think I've seen. I think I've seen. <laughs> there's innard, which is an animatronics inner parts. He doesn't have an exoskeleton, it's just like his inner parts. And he's Ooh. kind of weird. And then there's um Oh, what is the ghost one called? It's a it's a it's a slinky ghost like creature, and it's another spirit of a child that didn't get put into one of the suits, but it is a spirit of a child. Can't remember his name though. So out of those, which is the oh, is it more? Oh, I'm trying to think. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to keep. Oh, I and Golden to... Brady. Golden okay. Freddy is different from Freddy. Mm -hmm. They are two different entities, turns out. And I think that's it. So out of those, which one, I guess, has the best scare or, or best or worst, however you want to look at which Which one of them scares you the most? based on when you're streaming it's like this is the one that's gonna scare me if the other one doesn't um all of them are going to scare me personally yeah. I may be. but the ones that took me out that, the most that, that's not Foxy. one that gives you more ptsd than the others that's i guess foxy and freddie because foxy when he ran down that hallway i was like wow because the other ones don't run they just kind of okay. show up where they're at and then they jump out at you and do the thing but foxy he beats and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> and he's like, no, oh, I don't do that. Is that, um, is that to the movie or the or is it in both the game and the movie? They did put it in the movie, but it was in the very first game. Okay. Or the second game, whatever. Uh, but they okay. did put it in the movie, which I was happy okay. that they did. Um, and then Freddy, because he does that laugh when he shows up, he's like, oof, oof, oof. Ooh, ooh, and you know, you just you already know. <laughs> like no laugh, like that. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like a Jason's thing when he's like, shh, shh, shh. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And I think that's another uh thing about this game is they have established like a, a sound that you can associate with that horror <laughs> character. So Freddie and his laugh. Mm -hmm. Um, and then when you make it out the end of the game when you finish that section of the game and you survive till morning then the kids will celebrate and it goes yay so now anytime you hear that yay sound i think of that game or the chime where it's a clock chime but also a doorbell chime and it's like do 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 yay Oh, okay. So, so that's when it's not it's not a horrifying sound, but considering right. what you just went through, it's like, oh my god, <laughs> I made it. Okay. So I guess so. Just so the overall scope, kids who were um 
and I guess we got to put we got to probably have to type spoilers in the beginning since we didn't mention it. Oh yeah, okay. Um, but um, the overall scope is the kids who were murdered and put into the animatronics, and um, and the pretty much became remnants. Mm -hmm. They're trying to get revenge on their murder and got the revenge. Mm -hmm. And then after that, they went to what extended family or extended businesses that were tied to him or. Yeah. That's yeah. And I think, I think sister location was supposed to be a prequel maybe to. Oh, okay. So like maybe that opened up first and then got shut down and then freddie fazbear so and it just i don't know that's one of those things where they were like trying to cram it in and make it fit and make sense right it's kind of where i started to fall off a little I'm bit so like, what? <laughs> um but it's basically this guy and he lost his daughter i think something happened to his daughter because of himself one of the, she got scooped into baby it like it grabbed her and pulled her inside and so she's dead and he was trying to bring her back and then so i think all of the other kids that he murdered was like an experiment of how can i bring my daughter back and it was just not it was not good you're right not great well snap so is, is it to okay with that being said, has it gotten to the point <laughs> where you say, if they if another game comes out, you're not even gonna watch no one play it. You're more interested in the movies at this point, or like where are you at personally with uh, it as a series with where it is today? I if another game comes out, I'll 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 play it just because just to see what's going on and stuff. But it's not something like. If if I run across it and there's nothing else on that I'm interested in watching, but I want some background noise, then I'll put it on. Because it's just not something that I search for anymore at this point because it's just so it's just awesome right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. But if uh, if Corey Kinchin comes back and wants to play or like following on with Markiplier still, then I'll do that. But otherwise. It's not one of those games where I'm like, I'm going to watch this person play it, and I'm going to watch this person play it, and now this person like, not yeah, even. That's, that's definitely me with Fears to Fathom. Yeah, and it was like that it. for sure for the first uh, installments. But yeah. Like, and after it just started going all over the place, it's like, eh. Yeah. So, I guess if I were to ask you to give a ranking just from where you stand, if you're ranking the first three games, what would you give that on a scale of one to ten? All three of the games? Yeah. Or if you want to do them individually, no. you can. No, because I'm having a hard time remembering what happens in each game at this point. So they're all kind of meshing yeah. together. Meshing together. Um, but I would I would give those first installments. Maybe it's games one through four. Okay. I think I would go ahead and give them a solid like nine out of ten. Oh, okay. So it's like really, really good. I thought it Two. was. And the only I would only dock the points because there was some confusion on like who is who, what's the motivation, what's doing what, and the ends were not tied up that clean and neatly to have all of the information there to say like this is a clear and cut story. There and which is why we're where we're at today because right. they didn't actually tie it up like nice and cleanly but mm -hmm. i think the journey of it and just the innovation of it because because of that what he did a lot of people have been able to make their own indie games and kind of take roots from the five nights franchise and we're seeing a lot of amazing different ideas coming out of it and people are doing really well so I think just for it, it's not even like the father of indie games, but I do think it's the father of indie horror games. Right. It's it's definitely, I was going to say, it definitely made its mark. Because like I said, yeah. I was really surprised when I was seeing toys because I was like, 
Yeah. I think I, I watched it and then I just kind of got removed from it. And then I'm like, some years later, I'm seeing toys and other entries. I'm like, this must be pretty big. And then mm -hmm. the movie, it's like, I'm like, okay, yeah, this has to be huge. I think it'll have a certain amount of longevity, like some of the old greats, like a Mario, like a Sonic, especially since it's starting to get its merch and stuff and different generations have different experiences with the franchise now and stuff. Um, right. I don't think it'll ever reach the, like, the godliness of Mario or anything, but I right. think it's cemented itself enough in gaming history that if you don't remember nothing else, Freddy's going to be there. Right. Okay. And lastly, uh, since you've seen the movie, what would you give that movie out of a one to ten? I had rated it at one point. I think I would give it a seven out of ten. Seven. Okay. I think it's so really it's solid. They did what they needed to do. The story was understandable. The Easter eggs cool. were cool, but there were some unnecessary plot points where it's just like, just like why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sweet. Well, I guess that's um it. Uh, if there's anybody who's a Five Nights at Freddy's super fan yeah. that wants to add some clarity in the comments and me i'll definitely read it because i want to start i'm gonna probably start looking into it since it's in that horror uh genre and that's one of my favorite genres how about add some clarity or what's your favorite favorite points and yeah. some of your favorite characters and and if you know where the story is going you can type that three-page comment I'll, i'm gonna read it <laughs> are you with me and did you enjoy the movie for what it was or did you end up not liking it at all right well see i didn't even watch the movie yeah i i think you could watch it and enjoy it and get like an understanding kind of, kind of grasp because mm -hmm. i would say that the five nights of Freddy's i have watched is in that first three i might have did one and two i don't think i did three so mm -hmm. my understanding would be more with that than wherever it is now. Yeah. Because see, I didn't even have that information about the the kids being put inside of the <laughs> animatronics. Mm -hmm. And that's I think that's what made watching Markiplier play it and then Matt Pat break it down and explain what was going on that much more legible because they did the deep dives and they were the ones spending hours trying to figure out this franchise and stuff so while it's not clear so much during the gameplay they broke down like every part of it and then made it all make sense and i think that's what made it so great is because people were really interested in the lore and trying to figure out what was going on more so than even what the gameplay was giving one last question that I just thought of. Did they do it? Is it low? Did they make it in a specific region or did they kind of leave that general like this is taking place in Nebraska or is this taking place in Texas or this is taking place in or did they is that never been a factor? I'm not sure that that's been a factor, but I think in the movie, I think part of the tragedy must have happened in Nebraska because I'm pretty sure he was looking at a Nebraska poster. Oh, okay. Now that you okay. mentioned it. But I, mean, I don't think it's like a real factor of anything. That would that would be crazy if it was taking place in Nebraska because I really said that off the top of my head. <laughs> I'm pretty it was somewhere woodsy. It was like Nebraska woodsy. Wisconsin gotcha. or something. Okay. I think. Well, well yeah. Well we can wrap that up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let us know in the comments what you thought, what you think, how you feel, and what you want them to do next. Yeah. Well, and until the next video. Two peace. Two peace. <laughs>